Oh, to Jesus. I agree with everyone. Those present here and those who watch this with a piece of the word. Let's stand up for this time and reverence the word of the Lord. Of the, it is found in Luke chapter 12, verse 13. Luke 12, 13. says the word of the Lord and then one from the crowd said to him teacher tell my brother to divide the hands with me but he said to him man who made me a judge or or betrayer over you and he said to them Take heed and behave of courtiousness, for one life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of certain rich men yielded plentifully. And he thought with himself, saying, What should I do, since I have no room to store my, my crops? So he said, I'll do this. I'll put down my barns and I'll build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Saul, you have many goods laid out for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will these things be reach to be provided? So this is who he lays up the treasure for himself and does not reach towards God. The church may be seated. About this Jesus, he... He cites this parable. He tells this parable open a circumstance. We can say a family, family problem. Two brothers. Here they were actually in discussion um, about inheritance. And uh, they put Jesus in the middle of this discussion, the middle of this circumstance situation. And they were asking uh, Jesus to actually give his opinion about what should have done. Because people, they would go for the high priest and for those who were the leaders, uh, spiritual leaders, and asking questions like this. When they couldn't get into agreement, when someone couldn't actually fix something, they would just go to the leaders, the spiritual leaders at the time, and they would ask right there for world opinion, spiritual opinion, uh, counsel. And Jesus, right here, to actually um, try to, try to not make more situations that could actually incriminate in one or the other and say, oh, he's not a high priest, he's not this, he's not that. Jesus says really clear, man, who made me as a judge or arbitrator over you so I could come here and decide and fix your problem? And he says, he says, um, seek weed, be conscious, and seek weed, because it does not consist in abundance of the things that he possesses. 
And my brothers, Jesus at this moment and he starts right now. So I should bring a spiritual teaching. He starts right now. He actually takes, uh, actually takes this little gap to actually bring the teaching from what so far had so far many day many and many today haven't reached that is the kingdom of God and we're gonna see in an aspect that, that characterizes this man in this parable because he's he's talking about parable and saying about Sunday night and Sunday morning and we're saying the man that he had in her um, to his farm and in that season of that year he had planted a lot and he also he had a lot of stuff actually too much and that brought him some difficulties because he didn't know what to do there was no way that he could actually um, where to keep this this stuff because during all the season and this man in this parable he starts saying oh my god what am I gonna do I don't have my barn is not that big my crop, I have so, so many crops like they don't fit imagine you have so much money you don't know what to do that would be nice huh I'll spend all that money in two seconds but what am I going to do now? I don't know. So he thought and said, oh, okay, I know. I'm going to get my barn that I already have. I'm going to destroy everything. And I'll, and I'll probably just build a bigger one. And then Jesus, and then he says, oh, you know what? My soul, my soul is good. Me, I'm the farmer. I have actually conquered the many goods. I have many things. And even right now, I'm just gonna relax and chill a little more for my soul. He was talking to himself about soul. He was saying, Look, now I can just rest. 20 something years, 30 years, I have everything, you know. I'm just gonna retire. And then the problem when this man was talking to himself. It came right now, the intervention of the Lord. And it is what we read. And he says, um, you have many goods. Eat, drink, and be merry. But he says, fool, tonight they're going to ask for your soul. You have everything that you worked for. You killed yourself. So, who are you going to laugh that? Because you're not going to take anything. So, you're going to leave it to here. My brothers, it is interesting because the aspect that characterizes the, the, the doubt of this man, it is the fact that he's actually, he, he doesn't know what is to have and to be. He's questioning himself. He doesn't know what is to have many goods to be happy. And what is to be happy only. He thinks that if he has many things. The happiness. The success. The happiness. It will come right away, automatic. And that was his biggest mistake. Because in the world that we live in right now, our world, our rational world, um, as humans, the world that it is the creator, you know, the man is classified by that. We classify people by that. And we classify ourselves by that too. In the world that we live in, those who have a lot, they're good. Have you thought about it, right? If you see someone that has a nice house, that has an apartment, you know, they're on vacation, he has a company, he has a couple of cars, he has people that work for him, 
everybody, everybody look at him and they're like, oh damn, it must be nice, you know. People say, oh, I want to be at the, the man's place, so he, right there he's chilling. On Minas, you know, and those farmers that had cows. Oh, that, that one is good, that one is just chilling. That one is good. People, they're classified by that. And then you look for a really poor, poor guy, you know, just knocking at the doors, trying to sell some dinner, working every day, morning, afternoon, and night, and he's trying to work as much as he can just so he can pay everything that he has, and then, and then you think, oh damn, that one does not have a future. I cannot count on that one because that one is always working. What Jesus wanted to say right here is that men don't have to actually possess goods. And the text actually says that in the beginning. We can actually finish it up over here. What he says. And it says. It says right here, and Satan can be aware of the covenants because the one life does not consist in the abundance and the things that he possesses. And man right here, um, when he has many things in this life, he wastes his, his time working and spending, you know, taking care of the things that he has. Many times he goes over the things that he, he should be taking care of, like his health, his family, not even going to talk about his spiritual health. Because many times when a people has a lot, they, they need to take care of more things. And, and sometimes people, when people have this desire to just get bigger and want more and more, they just go over things. They don't care about their health. They don't care about their eating. They don't care about their family. They don't care about their wives. They don't care about the husband. Don't care about the kids. Always just, you know, right there, just always working, always just fighting. Money after. That's why Jesus says right here, You're a fool for those who are doing this. Because the promise of the Lord, it is totally different from what we think. If you are in the presence of the Lord, if you're seeking the Lord in the first place, the other things will be added. You're not going to have a lack of blessings from the Lord. No. King David once in Psalm says, I was, I was once young and now I'm old. And throughout this time, I've never seen a just to righteous. Bag for something. Go through trials and, and bag for bed. So man, to be happy, to tell his soul and say, oh, now, okay, now I'm just going to rest. Do you know what he needs? He only needs to have fellowship with the Lord. And this man right here, throughout his whole life, he was all confused without discerning that he didn't know what was right, what was wrong. I have many things. I want to show what I have so I can control a bigger one. Look at the mentality of those who think that has a lot. They don't care. He doesn't care about his family. He doesn't care about his son. He doesn't care about anything. He doesn't care if he's going tomorrow, today or tomorrow. He marries someone or is stopping someone. Oh, I'm just gonna get bigger. I need to get bigger. I'm gonna do whatever I have to do. The people think like that. For them to get bigger in life, they always need to have someone to step in to actually go one step ahead. Instead of, oh, I'm gonna destroy my barn and I'll just build greater ones. And then some people in the way, inside of their houses, they do that kind of stuff. They end the marriage because they want another one. They end the 
uh, family relationship because today I can, I need to get bigger, I need to be happy, I have the right to get, be bigger, I'm just going to destroy my barns and build another one. People, they do stuff like that. When Jesus sees that situation, a parable, he says, this man, he's a fool. Because he's keeping his treasure, he's doing all this thing for this life. And where we're we gonna go, where the soul is going, none of these things are gonna go with them. And he says now, the soul, it's always calm because me, I'm speaking, me, my flesh, I've done everything. Now you can rest. The soul, it never rests with what is from this life. Just like we have said before, the soul of man he, he seeks the Lord. A God that's alive. The soul of the man will only feel fulfilled when it goes back to eternity. And the parable says this. And tonight, they're going to ask for a soul. About this, I hear this parable talks about what is the end of every single one of us. What is our end? It's gonna come up to a point where God, He's gonna say, "Look, done. That's it." At the ring of the last bell, at the last clock. That's it. The last tick. That's it. I right, come. There's no. It's, it's gonna be just like a recall. You know, when you have a car. And uh, because the, the company, they go, they build a lot of cars and something big, and then the, the company sends you a letter, they're calling the cars that are made that year, that year, for the recall. Yeah, because you gotta send your card over there so they can change something that went wrong. So yeah, it's just like that, it's a recall. Because the soul that we have, it has been taken care of from the Lord. God gave to men a soul. And the soul... It seeks to go back to the Creator. The creation wants to go back to those who created. So, when they ask for your soul, what are you going to do? With everything that you have conquered, with all the goods that you have, that you saved up all the sun, who is that going to be for? So, uh, so, <clears throat> so if he lays up the treasure for himself, he is not a rich towards the God. So for men to be calm, it is to be with the Lord. The only thing that is going to make the difference in your life, it is the, the inheritance that the God gives you. Because in Proverbs it says, the blessing of the Lord, it reaches you, and it doesn't come with pain. The blessing from the Lord makes men rich. And it doesn't come with pain because the blessing from the Lord does that. It takes away from this this level that we are in, this rational level, this rational moment of doubt, of tribulations, this moment of anguish that lives in and people live in, even though they conquer many things, fame, when they, even though they know a lot, philosophical, ecological, even when a man has everything. If men doesn't have God in their heart, if they don't have the action of the Holy Spirit in their heart, he's going to be unhappy. He's going to be unhappy. He is unhappy. Because it's not to have things that's going to make you not happy. That was the biggest mistake of this man, and it's been the biggest mistake of many people here. Many family members of ours, they live this, they think that. That's why church in this last time they have this mission. It is to actually transmit and actually, and actually tell this message that is come and try it out, how good it is to be in the presence of the Lord. That's why we as a church, we need always to talk about this. Always to ask counsel from the Lord and from the Savior. You know why? Because only like that our soul is going to feel fulfilled and we can actually then go and actually tell the, the richness that is to live in the presence of the Lord because the only richness that we have 
It is to be in the fellowship with the Lord. That is the greater one. Because the word says, when you have, because the, the payment of, so, of, law, uh, of a sin, it is death. But the gift from the Lord is the blessing, the salvation. That's why the man always needs to be by the feet of the soul, Savior. That's why for us to be happy, we need to be leaving what is rational right now, leaving this, this level, the creation level, and get inside in the temple of the Lord. That is the, it is the redemptor, redemptor level, that is so should know the real Savior. And the Lord, uh, the Lord wants to talk to us tonight. And the Lord also throw throw out some gifts, a family. There was actually many families, and we see that um, what is actually missing in our families, in the families that we know, it is the presence of the Lord. It is the presence of the Lord as the one that is a counsel, as the one that He's going to bring peace. The one is going to bring harmony. The one is going to bring calmness. The one is going to bring safety. Because the family that we see out there in the world, many, many inside of churches, they don't, they don't want the Holy Spirit operating in their lives. Just like there's two men here. Just like there's two men here in the Bible. Oh, my hands you say with this half, I say with the other half. Many, many times they try to block the operation of the Holy Spirit. They act before the Holy Spirit does. So there's a gift here that shows there's this lady that she had a problem. It was a huge problem. Because of this uh, injustice, there's a family injustice that, that happened to her. And because of that, her desire it is to, to make revenge with her own hands. But the Lord says tonight, take away your hand. Don't make justice with your own hands because I'm going to act. I'm going to do everything. Don't worry. So when a man lets God open, when a man put in the altar of the Lord, any situation, he's going to take care and many things, think, the justice that we think, the justice of men, the justice of men is all true. That's why we have this. So this situation happens a lot. Many times we, you know, we stop them. Many, many times that happens inside of our house. But look, the servant of the Lord only wins the battle with a spiritual weapon. The servant of the Lord will only win if he knows down his source praying and go and find the Lord. Because he needs to have the trust that the Lord is in control. Because any other way that the servant of the Lord try to act, he's going to be ashamed. Because if a servant of the Lord, they, they bend over the Lord and they try to act with his own reason, he's going to be ashamed of himself greatly. Because me, flash by flash, we have the enemy in our soul. That is the prince of this world. And when, and when the servants of the Lord, they actually go to that path, they lose their right, they lose everything. So my sister, the best thing for you to do is just pray the Lord. Don't do anything with your hands, just pray and the Lord will act in your favor. Amen. Also, there's another lady here that she's been noticing throughout a couple of times. She's been seeing that her family is walking on uh, one side and it is really dangerous. Uh, there's a lack of uh, a, a spiritual, uh, a spiritual, um, a spiritual fellowship. And many times there are many spiritual gifts. They're missing. They're also not. Many times they're also not praying a lot, not reading the Bible, not doing early on. Anyways, this tonight the Lord is also giving this lady understanding that there's still time for you to fight for your family.
Se você fizer isso, and você if you do those things, if you bring your awakening, not only família, for your, yourself, but for your family, diferença. you see a huge Deus difference. Because the God is going to operate towards your family. É, é the intention of the enemy, it is this. To destroy, let's isso. make another one. É but é it's not. It's not the, that's not a part of the Lord. The part of the, the Lord, it is to give to us a victory. For our struggles, it is to show that He's in power, and for that, it is needed an awakening of our part and an action to actually let the Lord act in our favor. So this is the this is the word that the Lord has for us. There are moments where you can actually you can actually let. The problem is not you wanting to have a better life. No, it's not that. You cannot allow that gets in the way for you to have fellowship with the Lord. The problem is not you are trying to get bigger in life, prosper, be a better professional. No, it's not that. Because God called us to be head, not tails. But you can be a perfect professional and a perfect servant of the Lord at the same time. You can be a perfect dad and an excellent um, servant. You can be a perfect mom and a perfect servant. You just need to know how to control everything. And on top of everything, seek first, seek first your spiritual life. Because when the Lord is in, under control, everything just flows. Because this is why the, the Lord called us. So let's sing a, let's sing a song. Let's stand up at this time. In Jesus Christ, we are more victorious. We can be everything. In Jesus Christ, we are children. Your servants. We are inherent. We are more than victorious because we are body. 
We have the body of Christ. In Jesus Christ, we are saved. So everything that we need, we can find it in Jesus. Do you know why? Because He's the God I am. He's everything that you need. Let's have a word of glorification. Oh Lord, at this time, we glorify your name. We thank you for your word. Because it came right, right at the right moment because of our necessities. Oh Lord, we glorify you because we received tonight the desire to seek you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this food that makes us grow. We thank you because your people has not been, because your people has always been here, O oh Lord. We glorify you, Lord, and we thank you because you've been sustaining us through all this path, through all, all the struggles. We glorify you because. We thank you because our assurance it is always in you, Lord. And we know that one day you're going to send your children to come and rescue us. We thank you for this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh Lord, receive our service, our adoration. No, we could tomorrow morning be again in your house. That the day tomorrow could be a day in your presence, O oh Lord. A day where we truly would rest in you. Give us a night in your presence. Visit us. Your, your, your people with spiritual to gifts, dreams, giving direction, showing and giving all, all the things that you want, O oh Lord, so we could be aware to the speaking of your voice, so we could actually put in practice your teachings. This is a prayer we do in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say that the Holy Grace, our God, Jesus Christ, love of God, the Son of Father, the sweet and eternal consolations of the Holy Spirit, could be poured upon us now forevermore. Amen. The brothers may be seated. If anybody wants an assistance, even a prayer. We're here, the deacons pastor. We're here at your disposal. Tomorrow at 10 30, we have our uh, Sunday school. And once again, we're gonna, you're going to be receiving the revealed teaching from the part of the Lord. Praise the Lord to everyone. Uh, youth meeting in 15 minutes.